Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and I've got another day in the kitchen. There's a couple things I want to do. One is I got a lot of my scraps from my chicken, you know, my chicken carcasses and stuff that I say when I did bone all my chicken. We're going to make some chicken um, broth with that. I'm going to just slow cook that. I do it right on my stove. Um, I'm going to make bread. We're going to make bread in the Pullman pans. I have got a lot of thank yous to, to send your way because there was three people that sent me a beautiful Pullman pan. I've got three of them to work with. How wonderful. I, I can't mention names because they all asked to be anonymous, but you all know who you are. And thank you so, so very much. That was just like Christmas for me. Um, so we're going to make some sandwich bread. And I've played around with it. I made, let's see, I've been trying to tweak a good recipe for it because that's just who I am and what I do. So I, I made one yesterday or the day before. And I followed a recipe to the T. And it was, it was a very good recipe, but it just didn't bake long enough. And I should know, you know, because my oven is a little bit different. So this time we're going to make it, and I'm going to show you because it is a beautiful recipe, but we're going to bake it just a little bit longer. And hopefully it'll turn out really good. It, it was good tasting, but I could still tell it needed about five more minutes of bake time. We're going to use this big stock pot to make our broth. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to set it right there. Oh, this is going to be good. Let's see. I need to get my jug of water. I have still on. I've got some onions and carrots. This is all froze, and it don't matter. You can use it frozen. Every bit of it. With all the bones and pieces, and I want some good bone broth. I save all my bones, cooked or uncooked, because it all goes in the pot. It turns out wonderful. Leave it all in there. There we go. We got all them. So now I'm going to just add our water and our goodies to it. I'm going to get an onion. I'm not even going to take the skin off the onion. I just leave the skin right on it. And, uh, it gives it helps to give it nice color. Okay, I think that's gonna be all right. We're gonna put this on We're gonna squeeze this little chopping board. That's it. The onion goes in the skin. I've got bay leaves. Those are going in. Perfect. I got a couple carrots. Cut these up. Those are going in. I don't put a whole lot in here, just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to put some white peppercorns in here and a few black ones. And that's all that I'm going to put in here. So I got a couple of the, yep, yeah, I'm out of. All I got, I got to get more peppercorns because all I've got is what I've got in my grinders. And I always put, you know, a small handful in my broth. So that's what we'll do. We'll just use this. There we go. That's it. I get all my peppercorns from my little Amish friends. She has a store in her basement. I love it. I'm always in there. All kinds of goodies she's got going on in there. All right, let me throw this out. There's enough. We're going to turn that. I want that to come 
almost to a boil before I turn it down. And that'll be good. Now I'll simmer that. I'll simmer that all night long. And uh, I'll can it up in the morning. It'll be wonderful. Because, you know, I have to make more anyway. Because I've had a few epic fails with my freeze dryer. Um, mushrooms, those mushrooms I got from Sam's, which they didn't ruin them. It, di it didn't ruin them. I, they just, I left them whole. It, I just wanted to see if that would work, really. And I thought, well, I'll just cut them in half. Well, you can't just cut them in half. But they're not completely done. And they won't completely dry, freeze dry in the middle. So I just had to take them out of there. And I just put them in the freezer. Because they're still usable. They're absolutely fine. The other thing I did was I wanted to take some of my chicken broth and see if I could make a powdered broth, which I've seen people do. Well, that was like an epic fail. I mean, you know, some things are just trial and error. And it was just like this flyaway powder when it come on and it stuck to the inside of my freeze dryer and, and the uh, window part, the door. And I thought, yeah, well, no, I'm not going to do that. So I, I wasted two quarts of my beautiful broth, you know, but it's better than all four that, you know, all four trays. So I won't do that again. Um, I'll just continue to buy that and use my um, home canned stock. So anyway, that's a going. Let's get this bread going. Other than my bread that I tried yesterday with this recipe, I got it right down here, and I'll put it in the description box for you too. But other than that, um, not not baking quite long enough. Let me fix my camera. It was a fantastic recipe. So this. Um, calls for a little milk. I need one and a half cups of warm milk. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat that just till it's warm. One and a half cups. I want to use this over here. Perfect, actually. We're going to put this on this little burner. We're going to turn this on medium. And let that cook. Let it warm, I mean. Okay, so... I need to get my, I buy my yeast, because I go through a lot, I bake a lot of bread, friends. But I buy my yeast in the, um, I'll show you, in the bulk. And I store it in my freezer. So when I'm ready to use it, I always keep my yeast in my jar like this, you know, my nice sealed jar in the fridge. And it stays nice. Now you can store your yeast in the freezer or the fridge. But... Once I open it, it goes into the fridge because I use it all the time. Okay, there we go. We're going to dump this right on in there. And my yeast is set to go. Okay, that's going to heat up. I'm going to put this back over here. All right, when the milk is ready to go, we'll get this stuff going. <clears throat> okay, our milk, you feel that? Our milk is nice and warm. I'm going to put that right in there. And we are going to add two teaspoons of yeast. We 
we got that. And we're going to do two teaspoons, of sh two tablespoons of sugar. That feeds your yeast. Now, a lot of people continue right on. I like to make sure my yeast blooms. I don't want to go through all this and find out my yeast <laughs> wasn't, wasn't good, especially with the new package. So we're going to let that bloom. In fact, I'm going to give that a little swirl. And we're going to let that bloom up. We'll be able to tell in just a minute. And while that's blooming, I'm going to, I got some eggs. Two eggs for this loaf of bread. I'm going to crack and I'm going to beat them. And the milk and the eggs are what really gives you a, a tender loaf of bread. You can also, you want a tender loaf of bread, you can also put a couple tablespoons of cornstarch in your mix. That will really give you a tender baked good. Okay, that is all proofed. So now we're going to do, we're going to put our eggs in there. With two eggs. I need to get a spatula. Scrape this out. We're going to put in two tablespoons of butter, soften. So we're going to put that right down in there. Um, we're going to first, we're going to put the flour in here because I just want to put the salt on top of my flour. So we're going to need four cups of flour in here. And this pan, or this recipe is for a 13 by 4 by 4 Pullman pan. Okay. There's our four cups of flour. And then we are going to do uh, one teaspoon of salt. get this mixing and while that mixes up once it's incorporated you're just going to want it to leave it mix uh, leave it mix for about five minutes and that will need it okay that's all there is to it and when this is done kneading we'll get it all set to rise Okay, this has gone. Oh, that's gorgeous, though. I'm going to need to scrape that out of there. Beautiful. That needed for eight minutes. Now I'm just going to knead this into a nice ball for my little bowl so I can let this get to rising. That's a nice, nice ball of dough, friends. All right, I got a little bowl here, put it in there, flip it right up, perfect, cover it up, and it's going to set in a warm spot, nowhere near my stove though, that's too hot because I'm using my stove, oh, for about an hour, and then we'll, I'll get this cleaned up and we'll get the pan all ready. Okay, all I got going on here, friends, is I found some of this um, ravioli. I found that in my freezer when I was going through my freezer just now. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to make that into a quick um, freezer meal because I had burger about a pound and a half here, maybe, not quite. Um, I had that in my fridge because I was thinking of trying to figure out what I was going to make a meal with this because I need to get this used up. Well, this works out perfect because all I did, I have the mozzarella cheese, I got the pan, and I got my home canned spaghetti sauce already seasoned, all ready to go. 
and you can see in here I've got bits and pieces of veggies in there garlic peppers onions but I did cut up a little bit more onions and put it here and it doesn't look like we're gonna have to drain this burger at all because this this burger is from my local butcher and it's always nice and lean and that little bit of juice in there is probably a lot from the onions okay so we got that going there we're gonna open this up and we're gonna get this in here this is so easy especially when you got stuff already in your pantry okay I'm gonna dump that right in there look at that gorgeous this was made with a lot of my yellow tomatoes beautiful hey that'll be good we're gonna let that cook up that's just a plenty of sauce for this pan Okay, we're just going to let that simmer there for a little bit. I'm going to turn that down a little more. I want that to cook down just a little bit. You can see on the back of the stove here, that's doing good. When I cut the onions, <clears throat> I put the rest of the onion scraps in there. Perfect. That'll be nice too. Let me give that a stir. This will just simmer away all night. All the bones and chunks and skin and everything in there. I think I got a piece of I got a piece of thigh in there. I didn't realize that was in there, but that's all right. It'll be perfect. I need to turn that up just a little bit. I'll put that together real quick. Pour it off. All right. Now I know one thing for sure. <laughs> this will need pepper. I'm going to put pe pepper in there. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of white pepper in there. White pepper is good stuff. It's a little bit spicier than black pepper, but oh, is it wonderful. This will need any salt. I'm going to give it a little taste. Just the sauce. Just a little bit. It does need some salt. There we go. This is nice when you can do this, especially if you find something in your freezer that you need to get used up. I had the burger in my fridge that I needed to use up. I had the pan already. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn this off. This is ready to go. I'm going to put a little bit of the sauce right down in the bottom of my pan. see that let's move you up here so you can see okay now you can see what I'm doing here I'm gonna line these up in here and then I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on them I don't want too much cheese because they're cheese ravioli so I'm just gonna put just a little bit okay Okay. 
What do I want to do? Put some more of my meat sauce on there. This is more like a casserole than anything. All right, that's pretty. Okay. Now I want to put a little bit of cheese on there. We're going to season that pan. Well, I seasoned them already. I washed them and seasoned them. I don't want the bread to stick, so we're going to just coat it with a little bit of shortening and then we'll shape our dough and we'll get it in there. I'm going to turn the oven on. Let's see. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350. Okay, that's I think I got enough in there. That's all I do. I just take my brush and I just brush it all in the nooks and crannies and I get it coated really well. And this should do this entire pan. And it should slip right out of there when it's done. Nothing worse than having a pan and everything sticks to it. And it's got ridges in it, so you want to get in all those ridges. Okay. There we go. They don't recommend that you spray these pans with cooking spray. Too bad because I'm a I'm a cooking spray queen. I use that on everything. So we got that one done. Now we're gonna do the top. Same thing, we do the top same way. There we go. We'll set that aside there. Set that aside. <clears throat> I'm going to wash my hands. This, this recipe... This bread recipe is a beautiful bread recipe. It's just that, you know, you have to, um, you can't go according to their bake time. Yeah, because every oven is different. And unfortunately I did, and mine, you know, needed to be cooked or baked about another five minutes. I mean, it turned out good. It's still edible. It just needed a little more time to it. So we're going to flatten this out my sink. And I got the pan in front of me because we want to flatten this out. We want it to be about the length of this pan. Right? And you flatten it all out you'll get all the, the extra air out of it. Okay. So now we're just going to roll this. 
Fill it nice and tight. And the whole purpose of the Pullman pan is to keep everything condensed so that it makes a nice, tight, square, dense loaf of bread. And it's, it's good. Okay, we're going to pinch all this because I don't want this coming apart. We're going to stuff the ends in and then pinch them. Okay, just stuff your fingers in the ends there and pinch that. I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to seal up that seam. All right, now it's going in the pan. See how nice it fit in the pan? You're just going to flatten it out a little bit. Perfect. It's all nice and even and flatten that pan. Now with this, the lid goes on. It sets for 30 minutes and then it bakes in your oven for my oven. I don't know about yours. You're going to have to play with it. But my oven, it's going to be about 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, friends. Our beautiful bread is done. And I get here a towel. So it did. It was that extra five minutes that made the, all the difference in the world for it. This is very hot, so we're going to turn this over. Look at that beautiful loaf of bread. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. It turned out beautiful. We're going to let that cool. And then we're going to let that sit right there and cool too. Oh, that turned out beautiful. Take a look at that. What a gorgeous loaf of bread. Beautiful. So that's going to cool. Now, I'm going to leave my oven on. Actually, I did turn off. Didn't mean turn off. I'm going to leave my oven on because my husband decided he would like to have some of this, I'm going to leave the lid on, some of this ravioli um, casserole. So we're going to stick that in the oven because the oven is still hot. And that's what we'll have for dinner with some fresh bread. And my broth is doing real good. And it's going to just I gotta turn it down just a little bit more. I want it to simmer real slow. Okay, so we will let this cool off. That's gonna bake, and you know what? When it's all done, I'll bring it back and we'll cut into this beautiful bread so that you can see that. And we'll also dish up, dish up some of the ravioli. So I'll see you when it's done. Oh, take a look at our ravioli casserole. It looks gorgeous and our bread. Oh, and just so you see, I made some biscuits to go with our strawberries for some strawberry shortcake. Okay, we'll cut into this. I love this bread slicer. That's a beautiful slice of bread. I like that. How nice that slices. Oh, friends, take a look at the crumb on that. Is that not beautiful? Gorgeous. All right, I'm going to butter this up for Mr. Wayne. Huh? Oh, this is beautiful. And then we're going to give him a little bit of this casserole. How delicious. Set that up there for a minute.
Oh, I think he's going to like that. There we have it, friends. Is that a nice dinner or what? Beautiful. So there you have it, friends. We had a nice day in the kitchen. We made a couple things. The bread turned out beautiful. So did the ravioli casserole. And the strawberry shortcake with the fresh biscuits will be wonderful, too. And I know tomorrow morning when I can up that chicken broth, that will turn out fantastic as well. So thanks for hanging out with me, friends. I hope you enjoyed the recipes, and I hope you give them a try. I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.